Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for preserving our lives. Thank you for enabling us to come to church today. Father, when we look at those things that you've done for us in the past week, there are so many, there are miracles that have done, you've done for us. You protected us, you kept us away from accidents, you answered our prayers, you did for us more than we even asked or imagined. We worship you this day. Thank you because of enabling us to come into this sanctuary. And now, Father, as we want to share your word, we pray that you'll speak to us in a way that we'll understand so that we can use this message to carry us through the coming week as we wait for your return. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. I take this opportunity to thank the vicar and the leadership of this church for giving me this opportunity to share the God, word of God with us. I'm called Isaac Karuga, and besides that, I love Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. He has taken care of me in the past week, even though we had some challenges which are now very common. We are going through some very serious situations, especially economic ones, but he has continued to be my strength and my shield. And I continue worshiping him and praising him, and I continue living for him. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are in a new series this week. It is called The Power of Changing Your Mind. The Power in a Changed Mind. You know, we human beings are made of three things, the body, the soul, and the mind. The body and the soul, the body and the mind will come to an end when you die. Because the mind is this thing that is controlling your body, that helps you think. But the spirit or the soul is eternal. That one continues living. So it's not a wonder that then we need to think about how, what our mind does to us and how we can change it to become powerful or better than how we are right now. You know, there is once I had a, a friend or an acquaintance who owed me some money. And he kept on giving me promises. Come next week, I'll give it to you. Come next week. So one day I got very annoyed. So I went to him and told him, now if you don't give me this money, uh, ABCD will happen to you. And I was giving him ultimatums. Eh? So I asked him, when am I going to get my money now? So he gave me another week. Then when I went home, I thought about it. Then I asked myself, these people who are around me, people who heard what I was saying, eh? if they were to come here and find me preaching, what do they think about me? So when I thought about that, I changed my mind. I decided I won't even talk to him again. And I kept quiet. I left it in the hands of God. Eh? And I can assure you, about a week later, that guy was there with my money to pay me. Eh? So I don't know whether it was the threats or the prayers that I made after that. But my thought process changed. If you remember the story of the prodigal son, after he had squandered all the inheritance that he had been given by his own father, he sat somewhere and thought about it and decided, now I'm living a life that is worse than my father's servants. So I'm going to go back to my father and ask him for forgiveness so that I can stay among his servants. That is the thinking process that I'm talking about. That is what we should be talking about. A changed mind is very powerful. 
there is power in changing your mind. And I can give it to you here that there is a difference between the way a Christian thinks and someone else who is not Christian thinks. There is a way in which you can make up your mind which will be very different from a worldly person making up their mind. And that brings us to this reading that we are reading today, which is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 32. You know, this uh, epistle was written by Paul to a church that uh, was in Ephesus. The church in Ephesus uh, started after Pentecost. After Pentecost, there was a lot of persecution, so the church went underground and it was spreading rapidly in those areas, including Ephesus. So Paul was writing to these Christians there, reminding them or encouraging them to go on living in a different way from how the Gentiles were living around them. And one of the things he wanted them to do was to have a different thought process or to have a changed mind so that they can live a godly way. And that's why he says here in verse 17, In the Lord's name, then I warn you, do not continue live to live like the heathen whose thoughts are worthless and whose minds are in the dark. They have no part in that life that God gives, for they are completely ignorant and stubborn. We need to have a different kind of thinking from all the way the world thinks. Because the way they are thinking is different and it is ignorant. He says here it is dark. And how different is it? The way the world believes or the, one, the way the world thinks drives them into different things. It drives them into lustful desires. They are all mentioned here. It makes you lose your feelings. You have no conscience. That is why worldly people can steal and they feel nothing about it. They can make threats against other people and they feel nothing about it. They have no conscience. It says in verse 19, they have lost feeling of all shame. That is why things like pornography are being perpetrated everywhere. For people who have no shame, look at the kind of dressing that people are wearing. There are some people who I sometimes wonder, if you have put a tattoo on your body, do you need to go exposing it? But we see people wearing tattoos, and for us to be able to see them, they'll put on scanty dressing. Eh? Those are people who have no shame. You remember Akina Adam and Eve when they, when they fell in the Garden of Eden, they found themselves naked and they were shameful. They were shamed. But why is it that people have no shame nowadays? The thinking process of the world. They do, they do vices. We see a lot of murders, eh? Theft. Nowadays, we are being told about the COVID millionaires. These ones are people who lost conscious. Before, I mean, they feel nothing. So you can do anything to just live the way you want. There's a lot of impurity. But it's the thought process of the world. That is why we're being told we should change ourselves, our minds, we as Christians, to be thinking like Christians. Why? Because we've been saved by Christ. People who've been saved by Christ, we are being told our thinking process will lead us to other things. It will lead us to this. Verse 22, so read yourself. So get rid of your old nature, which made you live as you used to. The old nature that was being destroyed by its deceitful desires. You see, the way the world believes, how the way they think, we too were like that before we knew Christ. But now that we know Christ, that part of us is dead. So our thinking has changed. And now that it is changed, 
it is going to bring us to other things or it will make us do other things verse 25 says no more lying someone whose thought process has been changed by Christ will find it very difficult to tell lies We are being told, if you become angry, do not lead your anger, lead you to sin. Verse 28, the man who used to rob must stop robbing and stop and start working in order to earn an honest living. You know, sometimes I wonder with Christians, who do not find the need to work. Eh? There are some people who walk around begging. Eh? We are being told here your thought process needs to be changed. Work, use your hands. Earn an honest living. That will start from your thinking. Change your thinking process. About anger. It should be controlled. Why? Because when you don't do these things, when you are using harsh words against each other, abusive language, the Spirit of God will depart from us. Why? Because we will have saddened the Holy Spirit, who is already inside us. When you grieve the Holy Spirit, He's going to depart from you. You know when, what happened to Saul when the Holy Spirit departed from him? That is when his kingdom fell and it was the kingdom was taken away from his family we are called kings and princes we are heirs with christ if we continue living this life like the using the worldly thinking we may grieve the holy spirit and we lose the kingdom and most of all or on top of all these things our thinking process is what will lead us to eternal life that thing that we always keep on saying that when you're not in this world you'll go and inherit the eternal life you cannot inherit it if your thinking process has not changed your soul which is everlasting will have been dominated by your thinking which will end when you die and it will suffer eternally we need to change our minds let us change to be like Christ I don't know who among us has been thinking the worldly thinking. We need to change our minds to start thinking the heavenly way. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you because of your word. Thank you for speaking to us. Forgive us, Father, because most of the times we've been taking the worldly way of thinking. May your Holy Spirit guide us so that we can change our minds and become powerful as we look up to you, the author and perfecter of our lives. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.